don't tell my mama this ain't marijuana uh, Enjoy your mind trip, but don't trip on your mind, no man within the underground psychedelic movement recently, especially those seeking a singularly unique spiritual experience. As 5-MeO-DMT has been demonstrated to consistently induce what the Raja Yogins refer to as a nerva kalpa experience, a samadhi experience, or a union with divine consciousness that is beyond any doubt or description, effectively eliminating the egoic structure or dissolving the egoic structure to allow the individual to have a direct experience with unitive or divine consciousness. Uh, thus leading it to be referred to as the crown jewel of entheogens and the god molecule. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you 5-MeO DMT. Preparation is so key for this because it's such a rapid expanse that uh, you need to be able to have um, an existing uh, system within yourself um, to be able to integrate that experience and also to be able to let go. Um, because it, once you let go, you're there, but um, if you get caught in the birth canal, canal um, it can be very, very challenging. So helping people prepare for the experience uh, is huge. Uh, and then making sure people have an existing system of um, uh, integrated practices in place before uh, and then so that they are already ready to use those practices after the fact. Knowing people's uh, sensitivities to the medicine, making sure you're not uh, giving people too much medicine that can be really uh, hard on their serotonin system and if people get too much medicine, if it's not being measured, uh, some facilitators don't medicine, medicine, measure their medicine out and so um, you can kind of blow people out a little bit and it can make be much, much harder to come back down, be able to integrate back into this uh, plane of existence and people can continue to feel very expanded. Uh, so having a lot of follow-up support after the experience because even if you have a positive experience, it can still be a lot of integration process. Um, my first time doing the medicine, it was um, ex the most positive experience of my life, and yet it still took a year and a half of a lot of inward practices, <laughs> kundalini yoga teacher training, and a lot of uh, reading, and work, working with all sorts of different people to support in this uh, cognitive shift and emotional shift that occurred during that experience. In regards to the general use of 5-MeO-DMT as a clinical tool, it is of utmost importance that the administrator or therapist has a clear and thorough understanding of trauma dynamics, as well as the understanding of somatics and transference as they play out in the psychedelic therapy paradigm. There should also be a reasonable medical understanding by the person doing the administration, and finally, a strong emphasis on preparation and integration of the experience outside of the non-ordinary state. As such, my hope for the community as it receives 5-MeO-DMT as a medicinal tool of growing popularity is that it develops an attitude of respect which engenders caution and patience that people may hold back from using until there's an appropriate facilitation or, and or a therapeutic context and the individual is fully prepared to be supported in the productive integration of what may arise. The risk of confusion or potential harm could increase if repeatedly used without appropriate integration work. 5-MeO-DMT holds incredible potential for treating trauma-related disorders such as PTSD, depression, and addiction. What I, the advice would I, that I would give to people that are interested in this medicine or finding a practitioner is really trust your gut um, when, when working with someone. Do not be in a space of scarcity like, oh, this is my only chance to do this. There's no one nowhere else I have access to this medicine with. Um, because this person is going to be holding space for you as you are both uh, dying and rebirthing yourself um, and possibly imprinting on this person very deeply. And uh, do you want the, the feeling that you're getting from this person, do you feel like that's the person that you want <laughs> uh, to be in that space with you? And, and and what kinds of ways are they planning to support you ongoing after the experience? Unlike other psychedelics, 5-MeO-DMT does not have a especially long history. And there are some people that believe that there is some indication of ancient use of 
looked at the historical record pretty carefully. I've seen absolutely no convincing evidence of 5-MeO-DMT, or at the very least of Bufal various venom use before 1982. In the chapter of the book, Heaven and Hell, uh, you explore the darker, more challenging, sometimes some would call it negative side, uh, in terms of 5-MeO-DMT. Can you just each share a couple of your thoughts on that? Well, I'm not entirely sure that Michael Pollan went to what we call a hell state. Um, I think he was more awestruck than anything, or, or in the correct terminology of the word, mostly because he doesn't mention any lasting bad effects. Mm -hmm. Like, it's fine to be awestruck and to come out of the experience on your knees. You really, that's really the way it's supposed to work. It's when people can't sleep and they are having flashbacks and this kind of this reoccurring resonance. That's, that's what I consider to be this when they've really gone to the hell state. And it's usually exactly that the ego refuses to disintegrate and, and people just get dragged through hell hanging on. Because the ego refuses to let go. That's my interpretation, yeah. Yeah, the first time I used 5-MeO-DMT, I was actually pretty well aware of what I was getting into. I'd read T. Call, I knew that even though it contained DMT in its name, that it was very different and much more powerful and less classically psychedelic. And I knew all the things that you're supposed to do when you have a difficult psychedelic experience in terms of letting go or accepting death. I knew all those things intellectually. But when the time actually came to do those things, it didn't work. You know, I, I was in a panicked, near-death experience saying, I'm okay with that, it's okay, it's okay, but I wasn't okay with it. And, uh, <laughs> and it was very, very frightening. Traumatic would maybe be too strong of a word, but it was difficult, and difficult enough that I thought that maybe I'm one of these people that just responds very negatively to the substance, and why would I even try it again after having such a profoundly negative experience? Did you? I did. <laughs> but if first you don't succeed, <laughs> I mean it's, it's a little, I don't know. but but it's uh, you know it is genuinely pharmacologically a very different type of psychedelic, and it's one where we don't have a history and a framework to figure out exactly the best way to use it. We're still learning, and I think that everyone that uses it should be aware of that potential for a difficult experience. Yeah. Contextualizing the experience is such a huge part of, of, of it. Hi, I think this question would be best suited for James Whitfield for, for any of you. So as compared to other psychedelics like psilocybin, LSD, and DMT, the visions that you go to are extremely complex and colorful, and the metaphors that I've seen um, just try to describe 5-MEO is like the original primordial well, or the clear light, or some people even say purgatory, or um, um, basically like the transition point between like birth and death. So my question is, um, what exactly do you think these dimensions like literally are? Like what is this you're transported to? <laughs> Um, you know, I, I was very fortunate to be friends with Nick Sand, the chemist who made orange sunshine. Please don't tell my mama this ain't marijuana. Enjoy your mind trip, but don't trip on your mind. No man is safe from the war going on outside.